Before you enjoy this video, why not consider signing up for an account at PAX? Whether you're a player, agent, club, or scout, PAX is for you. Create your free profile and connect with those in the industry today. For more information, please visit us at www.paxsports.com. That's www.paxsports.com. Now, please go ahead and enjoy our video presentation. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen Rugger. So, what we're going to be doing is a new series here in which we're going to be looking at the all-time South African schools teams of the 70s and 80s to start with. Then we'll move on to the 90s and the 2000s. I've already done the 2010s. So um, at the end of it all, what we're basically going to do is have a vote and we'll come up with an all-time South African schools 15. Obviously, we're all in quarantine, so we don't have much to do. Um, so I'm going to be trying to release at least a video a day for you guys to keep you entertained during this period. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button, bell notification, and you'll know exactly when the new videos come out. So, South African schools team of the 70s and 80s, let's get into it. So, we start with the back three, and at fullback we have Gerbrand Grobler from Grey College. Now, what a fantastic athlete this guy was. Um, as far as I recall, he's only one of a few guys that played both SA schools uh, cricket and SA schools rugby while in high school. Um, part of the legendary great, uh, great college team of 1981 that went unbeaten, one of their best teams ever. And uh, yeah, he played for Transvaal. Unfortunately, um, he passed away. I think it was a car accident, if I'm not mistaken. But definitely one of the best all-time um, athletes at school level. There's no doubt about it. And he was very entertaining to watch as a player at senior level as well. Then the first wing we have is Jakko Reinach. He's also from Grey College. Um, he was in the class of 1980. Um, this, this guy was just unreal. I mean, what a sprinter. I mean, he was one of the quickest wings that you'd have ever seen. Um, so his son is actually uh, Quibbers Reinach, uh, the, the scrub mouth for the spring box. So the genetic line is very good with that one. Um, but yeah, he was an amazing player. Um, also tra uh, tragically lost his life. I think that was in a car accident as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic player. Ran rings around the New Zealand Cavali uh, Cavaliers in 1986. Um, and definitely was a prospect at school level as well. The other wing should come as no surprise. Coro Duplessis, Paul Boys, class of 1978. The Prince of the Wings needs no introduction, Springbok coach in 1997, and Western Province rugby legend, obviously due to the isolation because of apartheid, he never really got to um, showcase his full skills for the whole world to see, um, and had that sort of career longevity that uh, player of his stature deserved, uh, but nonetheless he has gone down in the annals of South African history as like one of our greatest ever players, and if not one of the best wings of all time in world rugby. Moving on to the centres, first up we have none other than Donny Gerber. He went to Hoer School Dispatch. Now, to go to a school like Dispatch, which is in a smaller town just outside Port Elizabeth, and be noticed says a hell of a lot. To play SA schools for three years in a row says even more. Gerber was uh, a huge talent. I mean, his uh, running routes and his fitness drills and all the rest of it at school level were legendary around the area. Apparently, he used to run from Dispatch all the way to Utenag on a daily basis um, and uh, you know he went on to become one of the best actually in my opinion the best all-time outside center um, in rugby history I don't think there's another player that can compare to him 19 tries in 24 tests uh, could have been a lot more if it wasn't for isolation and definitely a legend of the game and let's hope he recovers very soon from the COVID-19 that he's currently suffering from the other center Halchot Muller from Greg College, class of 1981. So another alumni of the uh, 1981 class, a legendary Greg College team. To me, Halkhart Muller is probably one of the most underrated centers in the history of South African rugby. And I know that sounds like big words, but I mean it. Th this guy played, uh, I think it was over 200 games for the Free State. And I mean, he played well into his 30s and never looked like he was slowing down at all. A very, very intelligent player. Um, he, he just had everything. He just had absolutely everything going for him as a rugby player. And I think he would have had a long international career had it not been for um, isolation. Um, de definitely a childhood year to many that were, uh, were growing up. And actually right now, he's a part of the coaching team at Great College. Um, so, you know, the brain trust there at Great College, they've produced uh, uh, so far 
numerous unbeaten teams and Muller's part of that uh, golden generation, one of the many unbeaten teams produced by Gray College. Fantastic player and uh, obviously doing very well as a coach as well. Then we move on to the halfbacks. So we start off at scrum off. We have Craig Jamison. He went to Maritzburg College and is part of the class of 1979. What is nice about Jamison is that he was actually, I think, I stand under correction, but I think he was the first um, first guy to hold the Curry Cup trophy aloft for Natal. Um, definitely would have probably made South Africa, uh, played, played for the Springboks for an extended period if it wasn't for isolation. Um, very much a prodigy at school level, uh, played in some great uh, Maritzburg College teams under the legendary coach Skonk Nicholson, and definitely go, will go down in the annals as you know one of the top schoolboy rugby scrum offs um, that South Africa has produced. Now, the, uh, now we go to the fly off, and I'm sure this will be a surprise to many, but uh, let me explain. Daryl Cullinan, Queen's College, class of 1985. I think it was um, Doc Craven, maybe, or Nas Boerter, um, that said that Cullinan was the best fly half they'd ever seen at school level. Um, he probably could have gone on to achieve a hell of a lot in rugby, but he chose cricket, obviously. I mean, at 16 years old, he had already played his first senior game for border and scored a century. Uh, he went on to become uh, you know, basically a South African legend in terms of cricket. I mean, for a long time, he held the... Uh, South African record for the highest test score and also the highest domestic uh, score, 337 not out for Transvaal. So he was just a jack of all trades, but apparently he was an extremely special fly off at school. And um, the, this, the 1985 or 1984 Queen's College team, um, which he was a part of, um, quite easily beat Grey College. And that doesn't happen every day. Um, so it just goes to show you the level of talent he had. And, um, you know, I, I think he still is considered by Queenians, especially um, as one of their best products in terms of overall sportsmen. Then we move on to the loose forwards. So number eight, we have Nick Mallet, St. Andrews College, class of 74. Um, he, I think I think the 74 team might have beaten Gray College at St. Andrews. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, uh, Nick was a part of that team, uh, great St. Andrews team. And um, his father was headmaster at um, uh, Bishops at the time. And in those days, if you were headmaster of a school, then basically you had to send your uh, kid to another school, not like it is today. So Nick got sent to um, St. Andrews College, where he completely excelled. Then he went on to Oxford, played rugby over there, played cricket as well. Apparently hit Ian Botham for a six. And um, yeah, very, very, very talented athlete. Um, played a couple of times for the Springboks. Uh, played for Western Province, and then obviously he became one of our most successful ever coaches, uh, Springbok coaches. Then when we went to other loose Ford, Ruben Creer from Great College, class of 88. Um, obviously very, very talented player. Tragically lost his life in 2010. Um, I think it was a brain tumor that took him. But yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about Ruben Creer. I mean, anyone that knows anything about rugby knows what a talent this guy was and uh, how special he was as a player. Um and, uh, I mean, there's videos on YouTube, actually, you can take a look at uh, where you can see Creo playing. And, I mean, he was a beast already at school level. And, uh, you know, he's a Springbok legend and he tragically lost his life, um, you know, to, like I said, uh, to brain cancer, I believe. But, uh, yeah, absolutely amazing player, guys. Very, very special player and part of another, yet another unbeaten great college team. The other flank we had uh, was Jakob Esbach. Um, so he went to Harty S. Vitbank, I believe, or Horoskov Vitbank. And uh, there was a big rivalry um, between him and a certain other player. And that player was actually Francois Pinot. So Francois Pinot and Esbach, um, if you read uh, Francois Pinot's autobiography, um, they were basically at each other's throats all the time, very competitive. And uh, Esbach was actually considered the better prospect at the time. He played SA schools two years in a row. So uh, he just gets a nod over Pinot over here. And I think he went on to play prop at senior level. Um, and he was part of a bit of a golden generation, so to speak, for southwestern districts under Heineke Mayo, where, um, you know, he, he performed extremely well and very, very talented. And not many people know about Esbach as a player, but he was a very, very effective and talented player. And uh, who knows what could have happened if we weren't isolated from the sporting world. I think he could have gone really far. Then we move on to the locks. First lock we have from Ermelo is Altus Berger. Um, there was a guy that helped me with this. Um, he's one of the users, uh, Old Tarted, and uh, he he really recommended Altus Berger as a player. Apparently, um, absolute monster of a lock. Very good in the line out. Very good in the physical play. 
and played SS schools two years in a row. And then uh, the other lock that was chosen was Chet Maheri from Gray College, class of 86. Uh, the class of 86 was another legendary Gray College team, uh, another unbeaten one. I think in that year they had about five SS schools players, and I think Chet played two years of SS schools in a row as well. Moving on to the front row, we have starting Davi Turon, Kimberly Boys, class of 1980. Now, Davi Turon, many know more as a coach, but this guy was an exceptionally talented prop. Um, he actually managed to play for the Springboks, I believe, in the mid to, uh, to late 90s as well. He had a lot of longevity in his game. Um, very, very powerful uh, player. And, um, you know, again, who knows what could have happened if uh, there was an isolation I think it, he pro, his uh, international opportunities might, might have come a lot sooner. And he did stay in the Greek Wazarian play over there. Um, and yeah, but then he went on to coach SA under 20, and I believe he's in Japan at the moment coaching. Um, but yeah, very, very talented player at school level, definitely. The other prop we have is Tank Lanning, Bishop's class of 1989. Now, the 1989 Bishops team will probably go down as one of the best Bishops teams in history and probably one of the best teams in the Western Cape in history. And uh, a lot of what that was attributed to was their monster front row. And um, they look, they had some exceptional players in that team, but apparently the front row absolutely decimated everyone that year. And apparently Tank Lanning was at the forefront of that. Um, I wasn't around to obviously see that, but... Um, uh, you know, I've done quite a bit of research on it and I've asked for recommendations from a lot of people. And uh, the name that kept on coming up was definitely Tank Landing. So Tank Landing, the South African uh, school prop for the 1970s and 1980s. And then on to our final position, we have at hooker, Sean Gage, DHS, Durban High School class of 1985. Now, there, there was a bit of debate here. There's Andres Truscott. Um, there were a couple of other guys, but um, old tight head, and uh, he knows his rugby. Um, he suggested this one, and he was very adamant, like, this is one he wasn't a negotiate on. And the reason he said is that this guy was an absolute beast at school. He just said he was one of the most aggressive upfront hookers um, of his time, way ahead of his time as well. Said he was he was basically like a, a Jacques Huysen type player, very aggressive always going forward, wasn't the biggest guy that you'd ever see, but had the heart of an absolute lion. And um, I definitely wasn't going to argue with old tight head on this one. I mean, the man does know his rugby, otherwise I wouldn't be asking him about this. So that's your SA Schools team of the 1970s and 1980s, guys. Um, if you have any opinions on who you thought should have been included, leave your comments below. And what we'll do pretty soon is move on to the South African schools team of the 90s in the next video. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this. And as I said, leave your comments below and uh, have a great week further. Cheers. Bye.